Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. I'm here uh, speaking on behalf of uh, Jonathan Lurie. Uh, he's the author of the Meptel SDK, but unfortunately he couldn't make it. And originally it was also announced to be a lighting talk, so just five minute talks. But now it is a full talk, so we had to extend the topic. So here I am speaking on behalf of someone else about a topic I basically have no clue about, but we will see what we can do with it. First, let me tell you something about Map Tiler. We are tiling maps, as you may know, and we are a group of people uh, who are loving maps, loving map designs and software development and open source software development, of course. And uh, we are putting together a set of tools uh, which are going to end, end the maps for developer, which are then easy to be used on the web and on mobile. We are Swiss-based uh, with a bunch of people being located in the Czech Republic. And of course, we have colleagues all around the world as well. <coughs> I was already speaking about maps and maps applications. Map applications, as you know, usually contain not just the map itself, but also the navigation or, for example, geocoding or you may this conference is full of the 3D topic, right? Nobody was speaking about AR yet. Maybe I will be the first one. So shortly about MapTiler SDK at the very beginning. Uh, what it is? It is a uh, open source TypeScript or JavaScript library licensed under free BSD3 license. And it helps you to create uh, interactive uh, web applications uh, or map applications on the web. And originally, it is designed to access easily a MapTiler Cloud API for maps, geocoding, and other, other services. Uh, MapTiler is, well, obviously a for-profit uh, organization or company. Therefore, we are building a set of tools which, uh, do help us to, which do help our customers and users to communicate with the APIs. But MapTiler SDK is, built, is uh, sitting on top of or the shoulders of MapLibre project, of course. So MapLibre is the JavaScript library for creating interactive maps on the web as well. This is basically how it looks. There is MapLibre core, so whatever is supported by MapLibre is of course available in MapTiler SDK. And we just are adding a couple of features which should make the life of the web developer easier uh, regarding the map styles and vector tiles and raster, of course, and well, or for example, uh, JSON data files or GeoJSON data files. There is a couple of, couple of features which I would like to stress. Uh, so the first one is totally the built-in map tiles. styles. I hope you saw already one of the maps on our booth. Uh, uh, people like them, we like them too. So you can easily access them from within MapTar SDK. Then there is this topic of language switching because uh, this is actually one of the key advantages of vector tiles or vector maps on the web, that you can style or change the map style directly, but not only the map style, map appearance, but also the labeling and the language of the labeling, uh, which may be useful for some of the applications. There is also the language auto detection based on the location of the, of the user or based on the settings of the browser, for example. Um, <clears throat> you can generate static maps. Uh, you can geolocate uh, the position of the user based on the API address or directly of the geolocation uh, capabilities of the device the user is using. I was already mentioning geocoding, both forward and traverse, or uh, then there is an example of 3D terrain visualization directly, directly in the web browser. So this is, those are some of the features which MapTiler SDK is adding on top of MapLibre. So let me show you a quick start. How to start with uh, MapTiler SDK. First, you have to install it. I assume most of you have some experience with JavaScript or TypeScript, so uh, the way is, it should be pretty straightforward. You just npm install mapteller slash sdk. That's basically it, if you are using TypeScript. But if you are more familiar with uh, vanilla JavaScript or HTML development, like for example myself, then you just have to, I hope you can read it, yes you can. Um, uh, you can just put directly from the CDN 
uh, dedicated uh, JavaScript uh, library and of course a CSS file. That's it. Then, then you just start to code the map, map application. So uh, what is in common is the first part. Oh, I can use this device. No, yes. So in the first part, you just initialize a map object. Uh, you put it into some diff container uh, called map container with the ID map container. And there is the style. And here already it starts to be more about uh, Maptar SDK. So we have, for example, predefined, I will talk about it later, predefined style, so the styles. So you don't have to remember them. You don't have to look for uh, style JSON files, uh, uh, URL, and so on. But you can also set all the other other features like terrain uh, or how much there should be exact generation of the terrain language and so on. So if you put this all together, can someone local help me with the playing of the video? Oh, that sounds too complicated. I will just skip this slide. and go farther. Uh, what you will get is a map. <laughs> map in Japanese having 3D effect on it, on itself. And uh, what was there? The terrain is slightly exogenerated. And if I look at the parameters, uh, yep, it is. It should be geolocated. For example, there should be full screen control. Yeah, just like that. So relatively easy. And the map style is uh, map style outdoor uh, map. So let me briefly talk more about the other features. Uh, I was already mentioning the styling. So our team of cartographers. You maybe uh, had a chance to visit a uh, talk of uh, Petra Duriancikova about how to style maps. And she's actually the one, along with Nicolas Bozon, who is preparing really a bunch of uh, styles. I, I believe there are about 30 of them, which can be directly used within the SDK without need to remember uh, all of the names. But there is luckily other possibilities as well, like, for example, I was already mentioning uh, winter. Now there is an uh, example of it outdoor. You can immediately switch to another map style like Bedrop. You can directly go to a uh, shortcut, uh, which is the ID of the map within the map tile infrastructure. Or if you are already having uh, your private map with a dedicated ID, uh, you can use it too. But luckily, and of course, you can use any URL or dialect or directly uh, apply the uh, style object into the set style functions. Oh, what a disappointment. Um, so next slide, hopefully, should be showing you some of the some of the map, uh, some of the styles. I wanted to point out basically there is a, I was mentioning thirty map styles, right? And uh, some of them have uh, variants. Most of them has variants, like we have Maptar streets. Then there is the streets dark variant, streets light variant, or streets night variant. And uh, we have the satellite map, but also so-called hybrid map, where there is a combination of uh, raster uh, satellite imagery along with the vector the vector labeling all over it. We have a beautiful database. Uh, map and so on. The video was basically showing just some of the styles live. And luckily, I have many videos in this presentation. <laughs> we will see how we can go. So, uh, I was mentioning also another feature, which is uh, the language switching. So, first, you can, of course, uh, set the default language. Oh, sorry, this is the one. I can, uh, you can set the default language, uh, uh, which the application will use for start. Uh, but later, you can also switch the language to, for example, Albanian language uh, or use a common ISO shortcut. And then there is a set of uh, flags which can be used also so uh, that the map really behaves the way you would love it to behave for, for a particular user in particular region. 
oh, this is working, so this is basically the result, how the map can change its uh, labeling, uh, language labeling, uh, directly or dynamically directly in the web browser. Next feature is the 3D terrain. Um, so with the options terrain true and ex exogenation 1.5 will enable uh, the terrain, there is alternative ways, but it will simply start to ex exogenate the, the terrain. And uh, this is a slightly uh, too fast demo, but I, I hope you have a picture. Uh, because we have prepared the global digital elevation model, which is then distributed in the map tiles apparently as well. And this enables us to really show directly in the web browser, uh, like mountains uh, and uh, Helia regions. Of course, it looks the best. Uh, don't try this on Estonia. You will see nothing. Uh, we are adding also local high resolution turns slowly. Uh, so yeah, the effect should be early better even. Another feature is geocoding. There is a very short example. You just call the module geocoding, call the function called forward geocoding, like Prisren from the last year presentation. And all you got is the GeoJSON format uh, as, a, as a response from the API. And you can then show it directly in the map. So here we have an example of Paris uh, uh, across Europe. So don't be confused if you are looking for Paris and you will find uh, many other places. Another example is the Static Maps API. Static Maps is uh, not the dynamic vector files, but this is the uh, way how to get a, a static image out of the API. And there are other APIs. I was already mentioning geocoding. There is, uh, for, we, we were talking about forward geocoding. This one is an example of reverse geocoding, like tell me what is on this particular coordinate, what kind of features, for example. Uh, and there is an example of the GeoJSON uh, being stored on Maptile Cloud. Geolocation info, like where the user is basically based at the moment. Uh, coordinate transformation API and many others. I was so far speaking about the core of SDK, but uh, we are building an ecosystem of uh, another, let's say, plugins, especially weather and AR control. Now there will be more videos again, so I'm curious how this will occur. First example is the weather library. It should be relatively easy. It should be easy. It is easy, right? Trust me, it's easy to add a weather layer, uh, having a weather forecast for four days. Uh, and adding add in it into the map application. So we can have either, for example, wind layer in this case, or as in with this case, it showed uh, the precip uh, precipitation uh, moving. Uh, another module I was mentioning is the augmented reality module, <coughs> which uh, uh, will give you the possibility to display really uh, AR in the, um, on various devices, tablets, cell phones, computer, or the new glasses. Let me see here the demo, and let's risk it. So here I have uh, directly the link to a object, right, which is a 3D map of a uh, piece of uh, Switzerland. Uh, you can, if you can, uh, see it and point to your cell phone on the QR code, you should get it on your cell phone and see it directly in front of you, on the, of course, on the screen of your device uh, or in the other devices as well. Okay, I will continue. Yo, this is basically the same example. Another reason why to use, why to bother about Mapteller SDK, because yes, you can still use with Mapteller services MapLibre or Open Layers clients or Leaflet clients, but they are we are a for-profit organization, right? So we have to talk about pricing and about money, even though there are free plans, of course. Uh, but uh, for serious usage on big scale, uh, we talk we have to talk about pricing, and those libraries are request-based. But Meta SDK, uh, the big advantage is that it is based uh, or the pricing model is per session. That basically means that you, thank you, 
that you have to count, um, you, you can count how many visitors your page, ha page has, and based on this, you will get directly an idea about how costly the application will be for you. Uh, you don't have this option with the other libraries, even though you can use them for displaying the map. So let's uh, talk also about uh, future development. Um, the future is yeah, round and, of course, mobile. Another full screen video, very, very beautiful. <clears throat> the video was showing this. Uh, if you go to labsmetal.com slash showcase slash globe, uh, you will get already a uh, globe uh, with, uh, with the maps and uh, map controls. Uh, and you can zoom the around and pan around. This is the way where the web mapping is probably going to, to evolve. And uh, this is something we would love to deliver in the next releases of MapTar SDK and MapLibre. Also, uh, if you heard about a progressive web app, which is the way how to deliver uh, applications using standard HTML and JavaScript technologies, but then these applications can be directly distributed in as a, as a cell phone applications. Uh, so in this way, we are, uh, we are uh, developing, uh, let's say, a demo application uh, you can find it on maptiler.app, like app, and you can see it on your cell phone directly or on the screen of the computer. Uh, another, this is basically how it looks. Make just a few screenshots. And another example exactly of this, uh, of this approach is uh, the, the uh, time map org, uh, which is a very beautiful <coughs> app showing uh, the history of Earth, very simple, uh, very simply said. Okay. Uh, so I would advise you to visit timemap.org either on your computer or on a uh, mobile device and see how it behaves. And that's basically all for me. So please, if you are interested more, visit uh, docs.maptar.com slash sdkjs or go to npmjs to find for Metal SDK, to look for Metal SDK. The source codes are, of course, on GitHub, so pull requests will come, as well as uh, bug reports all the time. If you are a developer, we are steadily hunting for people, and during the summer there may be uh, more requests uh, which can be found on metal.com slash jobs, so you can join our crew. And thank you for your attention. If you have more questions, you can see us on the booth in the exhibition area. Thank you. Thank you, Yakim. Uh, so we have uh, 10 minutes of questions. So that would be great to have also a few questions from your side. Everything was clear? Okay, good. Uh, hi. Could you please just uh, write the time map to the browser to see the, the application yep. on site? Thanks. Unless there are no other questions, I can show you the time map.org. So you run with the mic and I will focus on the computer. Okay. Where should I run to? In the meantime, maybe we can have another question. Oh, you're ready. You're fast. Okay. Uh, yeah, this shows uh, not only the cartography, but also the possibilities of the SDK. Um, and uh, yeah, the application itself is showing the history, like, for example, rulers in the regions and uh, how the, the situation evolved during the history, during the time. So if I just move to recent time, you may see some shiftments in this region, uh, but also on the other part of the world. Yeah. Cool. Any other question? 
Thank you. See you on the exhibition area. Yeah. Right.